want to welcome you to the Bing Crosby Show, presented by Chesterfield. Produced and transcribed in San Francisco with John Scott Trotter and his orchestra, Judd Commons with the mayors and Bing's guests, Miss Carol Richards. Fine singer. And the youngest of the Crosby clan, Master Lindsey Crosby. End of the line, folks. Everybody out. That's it. <laughs> Das ist alles, Emil. Uh, I think so. Dixie and I, we look in every corner of the house and we find there's no more cotton jammers. <laughs> we come to the end of it. Well, Bing, there are not many people in radio who have the easy setup you have. What do you mean? Well, anytime you want a guest artist for the show, all you got to do is throw a kid in the car and drive down to broadcasting. <laughs> I think now, Ken, we should get on with the opening selection of this little soiree, which is a little thing called music, music, music. And that's your cue, John. <laughs> Put another nickel in, in the Nickelodeon. All I want is having you and music, music, music. I'll do anything for you, anything that you want me to. All I want is kissing you and music, music, music. Closer, my dear, come closer. The nicest part of any melody When you're dancing close to me So put another nickel in In the Nickelodeon All I want is loving you And music, music, music Nicest part of any melody when you're dancing close to me. So put another nickel in in the Nickelodeon. All I want is loving you and music, 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 music. Another nickel in the nickel machine and give me music, music, music. Hey! <laughs> Must tell you, the boy playing that uh, minuet type piano was Mel Hankey. <clears throat> Uh, right in through here someplace, Ken. How about you and me, uh, leave us, you and me, tell the good folks how they can be their own cigarette expert. Right, right, Bing. Well, folks, it's as easy as A, B, C. A, you buy yourself a pack of Chesterfields, and you open the top up all the way. And B, you smell the milder aroma that comes from that Chesterfield pack. You'll see that no other cigarette has it. And finally, C, you light a Chesterfield and you enjoy this fact. Tobaccos that smell milder, smoke milder. Yes, every man who grows tobacco knows that fact. Now, what goes into a cigarette is what you get out of it. Into every Chesterfield goes the right combination of the world's best mild, ripe tobaccos. And out of every Chesterfield, you get a cooler, better-tasting smoke, a much milder smoke. So do me a favor, folks. Make this little test for mildness yourself. Be your own cigarette expert. Buy Chesterfields and enjoy more smoking pleasure than any other cigarette can give you. Chesterfield satisfy women and men. Chesterfield's over and over again. Milder, much milder, all smokers agree. Always buy Chesterfield's A B C. We have a rather nice lilting thing. It's written by Sammy Fain and Paul Webster. 
Sammy Fane, you know, is the fellow who wrote uh, I Can Dream, Can't I? And uh, Dear Hearts, he's had a lot of hits. Looks like he's got another one in his hands here. John? <laughs> Fell in love, lock, stock, and barrel. I wanted so to know that she'd care, but the lock wouldn't turn, and the stock wouldn't sell, and the barrel was empty as air. Wanted so to sing a love song, a wedding bell. Then I had a happy thought and a ring I bought for her finger. And the ring I chanced to bring was the ring that rang the bell. Now we're in love, lock, stock, and barrel. And all because a girl and a boy. Found the lock, had a key, sold the stock to your dear. Now our lives are a barrel. I fell in love, lock, stock, and barrel. I wanted so to know that we cared, but the lock wouldn't turn, and the stock wouldn't sell, and the barrel was empty as air. I wanted so wanted to sing, sing you a love, love song Of wedding bells and roses in May But the words wouldn't run And the bells wouldn't chime And the roses were paper mache Then he thought a happy thought And a ring he bought for a finger and the ring you chance to bring was the ring that rang the bell. Now we're in love, lock, stock, and barrel. And all because a girl and a boy. Found the lock, had a key. Sold the stock, COD. Now our lives are a barrel of joy. Now our lives are a Folks, a very lovely young chanteuse has flown in from Los Angeles to be with us tonight. A girl that I think is bound to become a real singing star. Perhaps you've seen her on television. She has some nice Decca records out. Here's Miss Carol Richards. Thank you, Dan. Hey, Carol. Mm-hmm. I know you've got something real stylish prepared to sing, haven't you? Oh, mm-hmm. I have. I What's have. I be? thought I might do uh, Bye Bye Baby. Oh, great tune. Bye uh-huh. Bye Baby from Gentlemen Prefer Bye. That's right. Carol? You got the mic, the stage, the orchestra. Oh, no, you'll think. be great. Bye, bye, baby. Remember, you're my baby. When they give you. Remember your 
his baby when they give you the eye. Although he knows that you care, won't you write and declare that though on the loose you are still on the square. I'll be gloomy, but send that rainbow to me, then my shadows will fly, so you'll be gone for a while, I know that I'll be smiling with my baby. Thanks, Carol. That was very nice. Very nice. Ladies and gentlemen, our next guest comes to us through the courtesy of the Junipero Serra Elementary School, which is conducted by the Sisters of Notre Dame at Carmel, California. <laughs> now, this chap, uh, this chap's been around our house uh, some 11 years now, and I don't know, but what we just, we just might keep him. Uh, <laughs> youngest member of our family, Lindsey Crosby. Hey, it's nice to see you, Mr. Crosby. It's nice to see you, Mr. Crosby. Nice for you to take time out from what must be an exhausting schedule. I'm Make this appearance, Mr. Crosby. Glad to do it, Mr. Crosby. So tell me, Mr. Crosby, how do you uh, how do you happen to be up here in San Francisco? I came up with you. Oh. <laughs> That's right. I want to tell you something. You know, you've got to be on your toes tonight. Do I have to be on my toes and on this box too? <laughs> Well, you know why we got you up on that box there? We, we, we got to get you so you can talk direct into the mic, you see. Oh, I see. If I don't come up, you got to come down. That's, that's it. <laughs> and if you dig into your meat and your potatoes and your spinach a little more, you wouldn't have to stand on that box. Well, I'd rather stand on a box than eat spinach any day. <laughs> you know something? So would I. <laughs> you mean that, Dad? I confess I do. I'd sure wish you'd express those liberal views at the dinner table once in a while. Oh, well, you know, at the dinner table, I'm, I'm only half boss. Your mother, that's the one that cracks the whip there. Say, Dad, hmm. when's Mom going to be on the program? Can't get her. She wants too much money. Well, maybe you ought to get her anyway. Come up with it? Yeah. Really? Spring? Mom still sings a pretty good song, you know. Uh, that's right. So do you, of course. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're, you're my pal. You're my pal, too. You know, come to think of it now that we're talking about pals. The only time that you and I really go to the mat over anything, it's over homework or bathing. Oh, but, Dad, you never have any trouble getting me to go swim swimming. I'm not talking about swimming. I'm talking about old-fashioned scrubbing. <laughs> Dad, I don't think we should discuss our personal problems here, do you? <laughs> I don't know that this is so personal now. Just a minute. I imagine it's of general interest to many mothers and fathers throughout the land, a subject like that. Why do all kids hate baths so much? Well, baths take a lot of time. Oh, a lot of time. What are you talking about? I can whiz through a shower in two minutes. How long does it take you to dry? <laughs> that's two minutes for the full treatment. That's everything. Shower, dry, and everything. Well, I'd say that's a pretty colorless way of bathing. <laughs> Colorless, so you'd say that. That's what it is. What do you have to do? You have to make a big production of <laughs> taking a bath? Sure. I what like do you do? Well, I like to sail my boats around the tub for at least a half an hour <laughs> before I even think of reaching for the soap. You delay that reach as long as you can, huh? Yeah, I would say offhand that a good bath takes at least an hour. An hour for a bath? 
Well, that's a bass that's complete with sailboats, rubber ducks, bubbles, and whale spouting. Whale spouting? Well, wait a minute. Whale spouting? You're carrying me a little too fast. What's what's whale spouting? Well, a bass isn't a bath unless you dive under and come up with a mouthful of water and spout it out like a whale. <laughs> mm-hmm. That accounts for those watermarks on the bathroom ceiling. <laughs> I'm afraid you'll have to blame that on Gary or the twins. Yeah? I can't spot that for him. <laughs> yeah, make it, huh? You'll be making it before long. Say, it's about time for your specialty, don't you think? Would you mind telling the folks, uh, tell them what type of work you do? What do you mean, Dan? Well, for instance, how do you, how do you sing in relation to your brothers? Could you give us a little... Uh, Description of your musical background, what do you do? Well, Gary's singing is a little arty. A little arty, yeah. Huh? The twins is a little hokey. And you? Well, I'm a little shaky. <laughs> oh, now, wait a minute. Don't tell me you're shaky now, boy. No, I was just kidding. But I figure I should get all the sympathy I can get before I start to sing. <laughs> Master showman, aren't you? And by master, I mean you're just a little boy. Thank you. I'll take anything I can get. <laughs> now, let's get down to this. What are you going to sing? Well, for my first selection, Your I thought... first... <laughs> You've only got one number, old man. What about our duet? Oh, that's right. Yeah, we are going to sing a duet. I, I forgot about that. But what are you going to sing right now? Well, I kind of I'm such a good speller. I thought I might sing Ragmop. Ragmop? <laughs> Since when have you been a good speller? My teacher's listening in. Besides, a little propaganda won't hurt. Oh. <laughs> well, let's have rag mob. I don't care. I'll tell you what we'll do here. You get down off the box and I'll lower the mic for you, huh? Well, I better stay up here where I am. I might have to hit some high notes. <laughs> You're certainly not going to hit any low ones. You couldn't hit a low note if you spent a weekend in the diving bell. Right? <laughs> Are you ready? Yep. Want to really knock it? I'm going to get a good shot at the microphone now and lay it right in there. Go. Oh, 
Who wrote those words? Somerset Mom? <laughs> now, that was fine, Lynn. They were all right. You huh? sure did. You were big. Now, if you'll just grab yourself a chair over there, Lynn, I'll get on with some chores, and after a while, we'll sing our duet. Now, don't go too far. Folks, here's a song from Riding High. It's a current Paramount picture, a song titled Sunshine Cake. Carol Richards and I, we did a deck of recording on this tune, and then as much as Carol's here tonight, we thought we'd do a sort of an in-person version. You ready, Carol? Ready. Okay, then, John Scott. <laughs> Sunshine cake, it's everything nice. It's sugar and spice, it's a cinch. We'd ought to bake us a sunshine cake. It does more good than a big, thick steak. Well, stop. You start with a tablespoon of trouble. Then? Then add a smile and add it bubble. We'd ought to bake the sunshine cake. It really isn't so hard to make. How now? Fresh tears a pound or two of pleasure. Kind words you needn't use a measure. Come Any questions, ladies? Then we proceed. Well, it's not from a recipe book, and you don't have to be a good cook. Or run to the oven and look. With such a simple dish, all you do is wish. <laughs> Why not bake a sunshine cake? Of course, it may keep your dreams away. Friends say there's nothing like the flavor. Don't wait to do your friends a favor. And for goodness sake, well, what are we waiting for? Let's bake a sunshine cake. Well, we've got the right ingredients, so let's proceed. Cheerful dispositions, that's all we need. We need some happy poetry, we need a lot. And then you put them all together, tell me what have you got? And then you add a little dream about a long shot of bed. Put on your slippers, light a Chesterfield cigarette. You add a little feeling in your measure cup. And then you gives it to the lady, let her stir it up. 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 Bow, bow, bow. Stir it up. It's got vitamins A. Vitamin B. Vitamins L-O-B-E Say if you're fat, it's for that And if you're thin, pack it in What's wrong if you get a double grin? We'd ought to bake a sunshine cake We'd ought to bake a sunshine cake We'd ought to bake the sunshine cake A flavor A brand new way to do your own flavor don't for goodness sake, do your friends a favor, and for goodness sake, do your friends a favor, and for goodness sake, what are we waiting for? Let's bake the sunshine cake. Thank you, Carol. Folks, when you uh, take a look around, you'll notice more and more people smoking Chesterfields. More and more folks all the time. And it's easy to figure why. It's really easy because Chesterfields are milder than other cigarettes and they taste better than other cigarettes. Yes, Bing, that's the reason so many people smoke Chesterfields. Millions of people, including the top men in America's sports, prominent tobacco farmers, and the top stars of Hollywood. Oh, the Hollywood stars smoke them all right. Broderick Crawford, for example. Just the other day, Broad said to me, he said, uh, Bing... The reason I like Chesterfields best is because they're really mild. They're milder than other cigarettes. Didn't get a chance to do much talking abroad about his picture activity. I wonder what he's been doing since uh, that smashing Academy Award performance that he gave in All the King's Men, Ken. Well, being right now, Broad is starring in a Paramount picture called Cargo for Cape Town, along with uh, John Ireland and Ellen Drew. Oh, a sea story, isn't it? Oh, this is a real sea story. Complete with hurricanes and fires, fights, mutinies, everything else you can think of. Sounds real fancy. Better go see it, folks, when you have a chance. And don't forget what Broad Crawford told us. Chesterfields are much milder, 
And they taste much better. Yes, sir, everything you want in a cigarette you'll find in a Chesterfield. So remember those ABCs, always buy Chesterfield. It's a great cigarette. Sometimes Lindy and I sing uh, some of the old songs around the house, usually with uh, ukulele accompaniment. Tonight we've got John Scott Trotter's arrangement of one of the Stephen Foster's melodies. Way down upon the Swanee River Far, far away There's where my heart is turning ever Closer for tonight, my thanks to Carol Richards and to Lynn for gracing these halls this evening. I had a wonderful time, Dave. Lynn, did you uh, did you meet Miss Richards? Oh, yeah. We had quite a talk during the commercial. Don't be talking during the commercial. <laughs> you want to kill this whole thing? <laughs> quite a talk. Yeah, I was telling her about my aunt circus. Oh, really? It was very interesting. Sounds fascinating. Your aunt circus? Hmm. <laughs> Who's going to be your guest next week? Next week, Carol, uh, Miss Beatrice Lilly will be with us. Oh, we're planning some very merry capers, too. Good night, Carol. Good night, Bing. Well, short stuff. Uh, shall we then? Shall we what? Amble. Your arm, sir. My arm? Thank you. We go. <laughs> Good night, and thanks, folks. See you next week for Chesterfield, the best cigarette for you to smoke. The Bing Crosby Show, presented by Chesterfield, was produced and transcribed in San Francisco by Bill Morrow and Myrtle McKenzie. Tune in next week and hear Bing and his guest, Miss Beatrice Lilly. Chesterfield also brings you Arthur Godfrey time five mornings a week. And on Saturday night, the Arthur Godfrey Digest, all over these same CBS stations. The George Burns and Gracie Allen Show follows immediately. Mm-hmm.